All right, we're back. This is uh, 8-Bit Players Co-op uh, on uh, playing Gauntlet, I believe. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't know why I'm saying that. We are obviously playing fucking Gauntlet. <laughs> um, anyways, I am Matthew, and this is my best friend Cameron. Hello. Uh, let's, continue, let's continue forth, shall we? All right. So, I'm Ray. I got all my equipment. All right. Now, if, if you haven't noticed... Um, there's almost no story to speak of, which is why um, we, we haven't really been talking about the story of this. Instead, we will talk about the story to other far more entertaining things like cartoons from the 90s and early 2000s. And so forth. Um, but like so far, like so far, the story go like the story is in uh, subtitles. And yes, we have our characters commenting, like how the Valkyrie's commenting right now. Um, but in, and honestly, just Morak, I think his name was, the wizard who summoned the gauntlet and you know allowed you to go in here. He's just being a prick the whole time. It's like, hmm. He, at first, he's just like, you know, please amuse me, uh, basically about you know going through this. And when you start going through, he's like, all right, you have my attention. And then when he gets to the, like after you collect two shards, he's like, you might actually be able to do this. And then. Uh, spoilers, the final boss happens, which I guess Cameron can already tell yeah. what's going to happen. Yeah, I I haven't said anything because the last time um, I, I predicted things uh, about where a storyline was going, I drove you into a mild psychotic rage. <laughs> yes, I remember that. <laughs> um, okay, uh, this is oddly fitting uh, because it involves Yu-Gi-Oh! Because uh, we discussed what, last episode. And the episode before that. Uh, and uh, you, were, you were trying to introduce me uh, to the, the oh, oh, fourth in the series. Oh, no, no, I did not try to. One, I, I, I had already tried to introduce you to it, and we were watching it. Yes. So this, at, at this point, it wasn't introducing yeah. anything. Um, so, yes, it's, it's uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! Zexel. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, we, we watched, uh, I think, like the first 20 episodes or something. Yeah, it's because, and... then, it's because then there was no more English sub. It was all dubbed. And I was like, I refuse to watch the dubbing yeah. of this. And uh, I... I remember uh, talking about one of the characters uh, called Shark. Yes, his name was Shark. And um, he was, in, in, in those first couple episodes, he was just kind of a jerk, kind of a brick, uh, the Seto Kaiba of, of that particular series. Oh, he uh, actually, he's not the Seto Kaiba of the series. Yeah, uh, and, that's, and that's one of the things we discovered, um, is because like it, you actually say that, oh, he's actually going to become... Uh, an okay guy once you find out uh, his backstory. My words to you were, oh, he's not being strong for a family member, is he? And then my response is, actually, yes, he is. But I bet you can't guess who it was. Yeah, he was like, well, you, you go, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to tell you anything more because I don't want to spoil it for you. I just look at you and I go, little sister. <laughs> I, I paused for a second, and I proceeded to tell him, yes, his little sister got hurt, and now he has to be strong for her. Hey, you know what, Cameron? Fuck you! And you did not let me forget this for, like, a solid two days it was so funny. after that, because I just apparently drove you crazy with the fact that I was able to guess what it took you like some 35 episodes to figure out well it's not that I didn't guess it I was cause okay it, it's like I was watching Yu-Gi-Oh! Zexel as so, uh, this is a pretty maybe a pretty bad comparison but this is what one of my friends told me before about something it was like eating a potato chip I'm just sitting there just watching the show I'm not even bothering trying to figure anything out I'm just enjoying it as it lasts, mm -hmm. and so when I heard that, oh, Shark is a gi this giant douchebag, but then all of a sudden I realized, oh wait, he has a sister who's hurt, and he's trying to get revenge on the asshole who did it to her. I'm like, oh my god, I never realized from him, I actually kind of like Shark now. And then Karen just comes over this out of the blue, I'm like, the fuck, man? But then I think back, and I was like, you know what, now that I think about it, it is plainly obvious. Yeah. I should have realized it so much sooner. Yeah, well, uh, another thing is, is that, um, we were actually both, um, uh, I, I guess you could call it, uh, multimedia majors is what they call it now. Well, I'm, um, I was always economics, but yes. Yeah, I, uh, but I was actually a, uh, 
communications major in broadcasting and uh, multimedia. So storytelling, it was actually one of the classes that I had to take at the time. And part of that is actually examining like there's own, like the fact that there's only like six or seven stories in the world and just finding out which combination they're doing. Yeah, that's very true. And I, I literally just applied that and like, okay, we already had one character who uh, had a little brother who he was having to be strong for. We already had another character with an older sister that he wanted to make proud. So I just went through process of elimination of, well, does he have a little sister he's trying to be strong for? <laughs> <laughs> that's actually really smart. <laughs> so yeah, uh, that's that's basically how that went. And uh, oh my gosh, where do these spikes end? They don't end. Okay, okay, we have a safe zone. Go ahead, okay. and you can grave rob me if you want. Okay, I, actually you know no. You know what? I'm, I'm I'm not going to be that guy because you're being that guy enough for all of us. Oh well, mate, thanks for making me seem like a douchebag, <laughs> dickwad. <laughs> all right, okay. You you, you're you're the one with the dash, so get because I'll go and look. Well, I, we, there's another door down here. Well, maybe I can go. Yeah, you have the key. Yeah, that's true. Okay, let's go over here. Yeah. Well, I was saying there was another locked door down there, but maybe. Hmm. Perhaps we can go. Wait, we're going backtrack. Okay, we're going backtrack. Yes. Okay, we're going back through the ha highly deadly room. Yes, exactly. Have fun. Okay. Yeah. Th this is an interesting thing with with Gauntlet's co-op is actually uh, uh, okay. Never mind. I'm an idiot apparently. Okay, never mind. Uh, is that? Yeah. Wow, I'm so glad my character figures out things like that. Yeah, actually no, that wasn't that wasn't your character. That was Morak. Oh, okay. He's always just hovering over you. He's 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 always with you. He's 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 always he's not there, but yet he's always with you, basically, kind of thing. It's really creepy. Oh, charming. I know, right? Um, but yeah, that's the interesting about this co-op is that um, unlike other co-ops, they don't split screen it so you can go wherever you want. You actually have to share the screen. Mm -hmm. uh, which is handy and hurtful all at the same time. It really is, let's just be honest. Because you actually get to uh, see the whole picture. Uh, only problem is you have to share the picture. <laughs> <laughs> Whereas in other co-op games, they'll they'll do the split screen with the vertical divide, or if it's like a first-person shooter, it's the horizontal divide. And that, children, is your geometry lesson for the day. Yay! I feel so much smarter. <laughs> Professor Cameron, <laughs> teaching this bitch. Just give it time. Yeah, well, I actually, I actually just recently became a substitute teacher, so you're not too far off. I know. So, <laughs> I like it's it's so fun because uh, again, uh, don't take this as an insult if you do, but you can be quite the smartass, and it's hilarious. Uh, I, I, I that's not actually an insult. It's actually a little bit of a pride thing for me that I'm able to. Um, be witty and make people laugh at times. So the thought of you being a substitute teacher is so funny because I, all the all the little kids are just opening themselves up to be to be basically. Can you please rephrase that uh, in some way? You you re all right you rephrase it then because I can't think of it. You know what I'm saying? They're just I don't know. <laughs> no, I, I understand what you mean that. Um, Impressionable children are, uh, and I'm dead again. Okay. Uh, that impressionable children are going to, uh, most likely hear some of my smart ass comments and go, huh, I can tell my parents that. <laughs> Basically. No, uh, it, <laughs> it's just. Because don't you have, like, sub kids that, uh, I don't know. Uh, actually, no, I can't. I can't think about it. Never mind. Uh, uh, yeah. Well, uh, yeah. I, 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 I'm, I am far more like self-conscious when I am around uh, the younger kids, 
when it when it's like high school level, uh, I'm I'm a little bit more liberal, but I'm not. I can't be too liberal because you know education system. But um, yeah, I actually I actually told one of uh, my friends that I was substitute teacher. His words to me, and I quote. Oh my god, what were they thinking? <laughs> well, gee, really nice of that guy. Yeah, it, it was... It, yeah, it's like... Huh, how high of an opinion do you have of me again? None? Okay. How hateful do you think I am to people? <laughs> I don't hate all of humanity. Yeah, just, just little pockets of it. <laughs> but yeah, I, I, I do have to be... Uh, a, a little bit more self-aware, but yeah, they're and it's kind of cool because um, I'm I'm in my mid twenties, and in being a sub, um, a lot of the kids um, and I just left but, myself open for that. Yeah, wow. um, a lot of the kids are used to um, older substitutes uh, like retired teachers, so when they see me, a guy in his mid-twenties, like, the younger kids get all excited. Cause, they're like, do you play video games? Why, yes I do play video games. What kind of video games do you play? Um, well I've played first person shooters, I love RPGs. They heard first person shooter and lost their minds. Cause they thought that was the coolest thing in the world. That there was a teacher who knew about, you know, Battlefield Hardline and Call of Duty hey. Black Ops and, and Grand Theft Auto San Andreas Golly. Which was really exciting for them because they were learning about uh, tectonic plates at the time and the San Andreas Fault so Imagine their surprise when I'm like hey, it's not just the name of a video game. It's a thing <laughs> Wow, it's a it's an actual thing that happened. <laughs> it's actually a major problem for people in the California area. <laughs> yeah, I understand that, that. I remember when I was a freshman in high school, I had my first English teacher, and I think we actually should have opened up this door first because I think there was supposed to be a key uh, in this door. Uh, yeah, we were. Uh, it doesn't matter though. It doesn't matter. It, we would have just fought more enemies. Yeah. All right. Well, anyways. Uh, so there was, uh, I had this new English teacher, and I can't remember her name, but basically she, uh, the very first day she introduced herself, she's like, you know, I'm, you know, I think she said she was just married, and, uh, she likes to play World of Warcraft. As soon as she heard that, every boy in, I betcha every boy, uh, every kid, uh, what am I trying to say? Every male student in my class orgasm probably, because oh. they were just... They were just like, oh my god, I got I, this. I found the holy grail of teachers. Yeah, no, there was, one of my, there was one of my friends who practically fell in love with her. It was kind of funny. Oh, I can, I can totally believe it. And if I'm right, I, actually, this is something I'm curious about, because you know, um, you know, pe it usually uh, teachers try to refrain from friending their students on Facebook, at least until yeah. after, like, students, like, graduate college, at least, something like that. Yeah. Uh, if if I'm right, she actually friended them on War, uh, or they friended her on World of Warcraft, and she actually used that to be like, now, uh, did you finish your English homework tonight? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm about to go raid this dungeon. Have you finished reading your chapter for tonight? Basically. <laughs> I don't know if that, if that falls in the same premise, like in the Facebook thing or what, but I just remember hearing that. Oh, was... yeah, one, one dungeon. I will take the win. <laughs> hey, see now you're stepping things up. Well, no, just just the fact that I have formidable fortune. That's I, I take I take the small victories as well as the big ones. Okay, okay. So uh, we'll continue about uh, nerdy teachers uh, next time. All right, bye. All right.